All right, we're getting ready to get going here. How is everybody tonight? You don't have to talk if you don't want. If you have like a Mike Tyson voice or something and you want to keep it quiet, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, you can type questions in the chat if you don't want to talk. Can somebody give me an affirmative that you can see uh, the market net flow screen? Just All good, man. I can see it. Yep. Is it clear? Very. Okay. Yep. We're stuck. That's good. It's clear, and we're recording, and it's seven. Uh, so we're gonna get going because uh, I have to come to my office to do this. So welcome everybody. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run you through sort of uh, the tabs I keep open. We'll dive into them uh, a little bit later. And the second thing I'm gonna do is show you how I draw my levels because that seems to be one of the highest points of contention that I get on a daily basis. So for now, uh, the things I keep open are market net flow, flash, flow line, the spy dashboard, uh, the dark pool summary, uh, and I can click through, let's see here, that's the dark pool summary, and that's kind of show, so anybody that might be watching this later, uh, this, is, this is where your market net flow is right here, this here is where your overall dark pool is, that's the one I keep open, flow line obviously is right here that I keep open, and flash is right here that I, that I have open. I also keep open uh, one options dashboard for anything that I might be looking at uh, at, any given, at any given time. Uh, so I keep, one, I keep one of these open so I can search certain things and I'll dive deeper into that. I do keep my watch list open and I'll show you this and then obviously the chart that everybody gets to see during the day, uh, I keep that going as well. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with and I'll just refresh so we can get a nice clean page we're gonna start with how I draw my levels. So the first thing that I do is I get to SPY here, and this is the stock dashboard for SPY. You can see it's lit up blue there. And I go to the time frame, and I click one hour. All right, so from one hour, what I, what I do next is, and this, there, this is gonna be a little bit something that you have to think about here, so I'll explain it. If we have a massive gap up or gap down, the hour's not gonna work, and you're gonna to need to switch to the daily. Okay, or, or, the, or, the, or the Greek levels aren't going to draw or they're going to skip some out. But for the most part, uh, on regular days, I come here, I keep it at GEX, just GEX regular. I click all, then I wait for it to pop up. And if you want to get a little bit brighter, you can click all again. There's a little trick and that'll bring it up a little bit. Now, next thing I do is I come over here to the line tool. I click here, I go down, I go down to the horizontal line. And what I am looking for when I'm drawing GEX levels is a point of contention around a GEX level. Okay, this is why mine are so precise compared to compared to other other things, is I'm looking for a spot that we have that we have bounced or rejected somewhat regularly. So the very top of this GEX line right here, all right, that gives you that gives you a perfect spot. You can see the candles light, line up with it. Um, you see the candles light up with it, so that works pretty perfectly. All right. So from there, I click the text tool, and you drag it. If you see the arrow, it's wrong. You drag it just above the arrow to where you can see, to where you can see the, the plus. Boom. You click it, 391.91. So, and it's going to be a little bit different if you click above or below. So that's how, if we go over here and look today, our 391.44, uh, I, I clicked below, below the line there, and that gave that little, that little bit of 50 cents, if that makes sense. If anybody was watching this chart earlier, I got this level on here uh, about 30 minutes to an hour uh, before we actually dipped down to it. So it was live and it actually came down and almost just it went a few cents below. All right, so that is how we draw our GEX. We'll do we'll do one more uh, just to just to take another look. This is where I got my top for the day for this ghost zone. If you saw me tweeting about it. I drew this line here, I go up and I cover that little black area there, right? And then I go below, which is where the line was, and I click it, 398.95. I had, I had 398.89 is where I pinned it. So that's pretty close. So this was the ghost zone that I was talking about today, uh, for all of you that understand the ghost zones, uh, and we can talk about that too. All right, any questions so far? Uh, you can either speak up or type if you have a, if you have a question about something. All right, looking good. 
All right, so for our options market summary, this is our MNF, right? And we know we click here for conversions. We want that enabled. And the green bars are telling us we're okay to stay in our position a little bit, right? Gray bars, we exit. So we would, we would have exited here on these. If you saw, we got that little dip. Uh, and then around here, this, this is one of those things that's a point of contention. Like you can uh, see how we go down, 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 down. We went down, 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 down. Then our green bars picked up and we went back up. And we, if we held till close, we did pretty well. So, and it's, and it's just the same for when it's going red when we're on puts. This is our time frame continuity. For anybody who hasn't been paying attention to that, it doesn't light up uh, when the market's not open, but if this is gray uh, during market hours, then not all expiries are the same. If it's green, they are all bullish, and if it's red, they are all bearish. Okay, and so now we'll scroll down to some parts here uh, that, we, that we like to look at. We all know what our DEX is, and I can talk about that here in a little bit. I don't regularly play DEX unless I see confluence between a bunch of other factors, and we'll talk about that as well. Our flow map, pretty simple. These are our calls and puts for our different expiries. So right now we are pretty call heavy, uh, but we're fairly close to even for Friday's expiry and next week is showing uh, a 21, 21 to three. So that's pretty massive, all right? If we're going on this side of it, these are the ones being sold. So if this, this side is all green and over here is red, they're just buying calls and getting rid of puts, okay? One second, somebody's somebody's tagging me in a channel. Oh, okay, thanks, you made it in, yep. good. My bad, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> okay, our, uh, our dealer's market diary. So uh, everything I'm gonna do tonight is going to be the smoothest brain version that you can get on an explanation for things, okay? So, DMD, big bar up, right? Potential, potential sell-off at the end of the day. Big bar down. <laughs> Poten potential potential ramp up buying at the end of the day. Okay, so if this here was gone and this was a big bar down, this would that would mean on the 13th we would have a pretty good chance at the end of the day, last hour to 30 minutes of a ramp up. All right, I'm going to try to keep these things uh, as smooth as possible for no confusion. Anybody got questions so far? Silence. All right. Okay, so that is how I run DMD. If, if it's on a regular day and it's below 2.5 billion, I usually ignore it, okay? Uh, I do not start to mess with it until we get above this line and it's very clear that one side is skewed towards the other and I would always prefer a Friday. Always, always, always. Okay, the rest of this I don't, I don't necessarily look at too often. I don't dive too deep. Uh, into some of these things because the tools that we have now uh, are working just fine. All right, so next thing we're going to talk about, so we have our MNF and we have our flow line here. And one of the things that I'm always watching with these flow lines, you can see the different DTEs and you see me tweet about it and talk about it during the day, is when we do have time frame continuity, some... Who's, 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 who's going on in the background? It's all right. Uh, uh, when we do have time frame continuity, what we really want to see is, is these puts going down and staying and staying as far down as possible for when we're bullish with calls rising. Okay, when you start to get these where they're neck and neck throughout it, even if we have time frame continuity, you're going to start seeing chop throughout that time, and it's and it's just not something uh, it's just not something that we're going to be able to. Uh, what did I do? Um, it's just it's it's going it's going to cause more and more and more issues if they're if they're tight in this area in this area and you're just going to experience chop. Okay, so there's no real reason to go heavy uh, and try to do anything crazy during these times. Hey, uh, in in the money jam, I think you're I think you're bouncing some uh, some background noise, man. Somebody is that are that are pro gex. I don't think so. I have everybody that's here muted right now. Oh, okay. Maybe not. My, my apologies. But there were a few to start with, so they're muted now. Okay. Oh, okay. We're good, to, we're good to go then. All right. Everybody, all right. So, any questions on how I look at flow line during the day? Very simple. You start to get these muddied lines, 
play small and only play level to level uh, and, and be ready to experience massive amounts of chop. Next up is Flash, and I'll show you how I run this. This is pretty simple. We'll refresh it so I can show you the clicks. I click Optionable. I click Divergences, Algo Flow Divergences, and then I look for bullish and bearish cases, okay? So if you watch the pre-market prep video, I say there's not a, hot, a lot of bull, a lot of bear. But see, this is one of these things that you're also going to want to check, okay? Ignore ETFs. Yeah. Big man out from the back. El Mahani right through it. Whips it. Oh, jeez, he beeps, man. Big man out from the back. El Mahani mm -hmm. right through it. Whips it. Oh, jeez, he beeps, man. What's that? Did we lose you? No, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Some... You stalled for a second. Oh, somebody somebody had like weird background stuff going on when they joined. I... And in your list, is everybody muted? Uh, Pro Gex and Milford Beach are not. I bet you. Wait, you it's know, only muting them for me when I do it. Then. Oh, okay. Uh, You're oh. the host. You should be able to mute everybody. I don't. Okay. Okay. Right click on them. Mute. Check. Oh my God, the power I have. This is phenomenal. There you go. Yep. Okay. So, any questions? Uh, type them in chat or unmute yourself and ask, and we'll go. So let's just take a look real here, real quick here. Uh, <laughs> indices, I do not, I do not really pay attention to these when it comes to bullish or bearish because they're vehicles for hedging, so we ignore them. So let's find a regular ticker. Okay, let's take a look at cat real quick. So we've got our options dashboard open. All right, we're gonna type in cat, and we're just gonna see real quick, and we'll just walk through kind of the process I do in the evening. I actually do this from my phone, actually, while sitting on the couch, and sometimes my iPad. So I'm not necessarily looking for uh, the algo here, all right, to see what it's saying or what it's doing. I'm more so, I'm more so looking uh, down here for our, this is important. I mean, you want to know what it's doing, but I'm more so coming down here and looking for the delta correlations. Let me show you. Let me show you how we do this. Uncheck deltas. Click net puts. Okay, and that's going to show you how many puts are are being sold off. If this is big green, right, they're loading the boat on puts. Uncheck net puts. Click net calls. So cat isn't something that I would even be interested in playing at the moment, right? Calls are calls are down. Puts are down. It shows indecision in this. Let's check another one to see what it looks like a little bit further out. <coughs> For our options dashboard, excuse me. So we come on down. Apple's a little bit more interesting. Put deltas were way up. And you can see as they were going up, we were seeing that downtrend. They shrunk a little bit right here as we started to see this uptrend. And then call deltas have kind of been down pretty much the entire time. Uh, so people are still are still buying more puts than calls, but they sold off some of their puts during this uptrend, obviously, because when you go up five, six bucks in a week, uh, your contracts aren't doing that well. Any questions so far? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I, the dealer Greeks when, when below over here, laggy. If it's below, they're being they're being sold. Yes. So what you what you ultimately want to see is is if you want to go strong, uh, if you want yes above bottom. If you want to go strong into something for calls, you want to see this up here in green, right? If you want to go heavy into puts, you want to see these big bars up here on the put deltas in the green. Perfect. Okay. I see questions popping in, so I'm so I'm waiting. Uh, can you do it with one or five day? I think you can switch it down here. But I don't think it gives you to see the put deltas pretty much have stayed the same. They're just slightly different there. So I don't, I don't really change that too much, Jam, to be honest. Uh, 
Cool. One of the things about this platform is it is so insanely powerful, but if you take the time to just kind of go through the most simplistic things on it, you're going to have you're going to have a little bit more success than an absolute deep dive into everything, if that makes sense. In the beginning, you really just want to kind of slow it down a little bit uh, and do your do your absolute best to knock out the simple things and look for certain signals uh, that, that, that have confluence with what you're doing and then go from there. Any questions so far? Those, those were two good ones. Everybody's so quiet just listening. My voice must be phenomenal. <clears throat> I'm, wait, I'm waiting on you to type here to see what happens. Yes, very soothing. That's very helpful. Sure, little cub. Uh, and it, this is being recorded too, so it'll be later on. But I'll give a, I'll give a, I'll give another quick, a quick rundown of it. Uh, and like I said, I'm putting everything in the uh, most smooth brain version possible. Uh, Hater is the one with the math. Uh, uh, Hater's the one with all the math and understands how it all works, and I try to drill it down into a teachable, digestible moment for you so you can understand it a little bit easier. So DMD is, uh, and I explain this, I try to only mess with it on Fridays. I'm looking for over, over this line to start. Big green bar up, last hour of the day uh, could, be, could be a sell-off. Big red bar down, last hour of the day could be a run-up. So that's, that's the simplistic version of DMD. The absolute easiest way to think about it is, and it is big bar up, sell off, big bar down, run up. And that's around the last hour of the day. <coughs> hey Jam, I covered that uh, in the beginning uh, of it. <clears throat> so when I post this video here in a little bit, um, you might just wanna watch the first like three minutes. Hey, you're good, you're good. Um, Oh, we also covered that today, Curious, uh, so far. Um, uh, so, so just watch the first three minutes of the video. I'll show you exactly uh, how I drew it out. And I'll have this video up about probably 10, 20 minutes after we're done tonight. So there's that. Uh, I don't think so, Theta. Is there any advantage to plotting GEX levels with SPX2? Not, I, I don't look at SPX. Uh, ever and that that 3800 gex on SPX was basically a 3800 gex uh, on ours as well so it, it, around that area we had some I think heavy dark pools um, and I will say there's one thing that I want to bring up about uh, when I was talking about our symbols and going through our options areas spy I first off I want to reiterate and there are some big words at the top of the screen they're gonna pop up do not mess with the spy algo use market net flow okay mnf is your jam spy is a vehicle for hedging you do not want to mess with this algo but you do i went to the wrong screen uh you do want to look at this part no i didn't go to the wrong screen you do want to go go to here and look at three or five days for your delta correlations. You've seen Hater tweeting about them a lot that shows our implied move and what our percentage is. Uh, there's a really good video that he's made on that that will explain it uh, a lot better than I can. But uh, that's the long and short of it for that. All right, so the next one I want to show you is individual dark pool tickers. Okay, and I just want to show you this real quick. Uh, it's, some, it's something that I keep an eye on. Uh, if I if I if I haven't pinged the bots right and I'm gonna point out I ignore this entire area all right I do not look for these dark pool prints up here I scroll down I scroll down I do not look at this area I am looking for these areas here to put on my chart okay so something this small I ignore something this small I don't add to my chart if you look at my chart pretty clean not a whole lot of lines and you can also see uh, you can also see that I do not have I do not have some of these on here because they're pretty light and we're quite a, we're quite, a, quite above that level, right? I'm looking for the ones that are around this range right here. Now, 
let's say we start rejecting off 388.31 or bouncing off it over and over again, I may add that level later on if I've noticed. I'll come back and check real quick uh, and then I'll put it on my chart. Any questions? For any of you who missed any of this, it is rec it is recording, and I'll have it up uh, and post it in um, the MNF channel when it's when it's done. Does color matter on DMD for being up and down? Uh, I don't think so. Baxter, do you know the answer to that question? I think it always ends up being this way. Uh, this on the DMD? Yeah. No, color is always that way. Okay. Okay. We're it's I, I, you can see, uh, look towards the middle, you have some green low that just, I think it started off green, but then it sold off more, which is why it turned red. Right. Check, check. Okay. Uh, anything before I keep moving on? Okay. I'm going to show you my next, uh, my next favorite thing. So the overall dark pool market summary, okay? Uh, we're going to scroll down a little bit here. We're going to skip through a few of these things for a mm -hmm. second. And what we're gonna look for is this sector net amount here, okay? So this is our dark pool sectors going out, and these are our inflows, okay? And this here are your here are your sections that they are in. So step two of this, and your brokerage can help you out with this, uh, they all have a list of the top of the top underlines of these of these things. And I'll show you this. So what I've done is you can see my list here, comms. Right, XLC, XLY, XLP, XLE. These are the top underlines of all of the ETFs that are in that dark pool sector, okay? So I can come here, I can look, I can check this, but here is something that is really, 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 really cool. Let's just look at one. I clicked on the spy one again. Let's just say, okay, so Finn is seeing some outflow right now, right now, and if you're paying attention, they have earnings this week, right? So let's scroll up a little bit. Let's go to dark pool trades and let's find Finn and let's see what we see. Okay, so what we're looking for, uh, and we took C, I think, for a swing for like two straight weeks because it, did, it had nothing but at ask uh, showing up over in these block trades and then going through some of its stuff. It, it looked like it was pretty bullish uh, and it was also showing up uh, here in, in, in the highest change of things, right? and it was showing up over here, and it was showing up, we could see C down here. So what you're looking for is some confluence between these things. But right now it looks like Finn's not doing that great. Maybe, so maybe some folks are anticipating earnings not going well, so your next step would be to find one uh, and go check it out. Okay, so let's just choose, let's just choose JPM. We don't really want to, we don't really want to do too much. We might want to check out some of its dark pool levels, mm -hmm. but we're really interested in and JPM is what its delta correlations look like, okay? Is everybody understanding the process so far of kind of how I start to look for things? Can I get a thumbs up? Smiley emoji. Okay, so we saw that Finn's seeing some money leave. Okay, great, so we clicked on JPM. We went to its options chart. We're looking at put deltas. So take a look at this, see how it's starting to shrink and we're slowly starting to get a rise up here. All right, our net call deltas are starting to go down quite a bit. So we're going to go back up to the top and we want to go to its stocks dashboard and we just want to check a few levels, All right? So if you missed earlier how I draw my levels, you're about to, you're about to see it anyways. All right, so we got too high here. Let's see, let's see what I was talking about earlier. If you gap up too much, you miss a level. So we did. So let's go back out to the daily and see what we see if we can get get a bigger picture. So we'll zoom in a little bit. JPM is hitting the top of this gex here. <clears throat> it's got a negative algo. Its dark pool correlations are starting to turn. So if I were looking at JPM right now and I were looking, gee, I think I might want to short this soon. I might look around 140.79. I might look a little bit below on its line here at 139.36. Is that helpful to anybody as to kind of how I find my swings? I've been swinging a lot in this market lately, actually, and I've been using this process here of drawing out the levels, kind of being patient. Uh, I don't watch charts all day. I set alerts for where I want price to hit before I'll go long or short. Um, and 
that is that is kind of how I've been finding my swings, combining all those tools. And I know this is a lot to digest. Um, it, I, I've been I've been in the Trade Ticks platform forever, uh, so I've I've had all the time to watch it when it was a few tools to all all of these tools combined, and putting them all together takes a little bit of time. Uh, I'm just hoping this this helps out a little bit. So if we're just looking at JPM here. I will, I will, it might be a good short, so I will, I will set some price alerts, number one, uh, and then I will check back uh, on its deltas uh, and the fin dark flow to see how it's going, because I want to, I want all those things to kind of uh, conflue together. I want confluence in my place. Uh, I want multiple signals that point towards my direction. Somebody have a question? Okay. Just a little bit of noise. Uh, we we are we are into the Q and A part now because I just feel, I wanted to walk you through that. Actually, let me let me full on walk you through how I actually enter plays. So uh, I, I will tell you, my mentor 15 years ago said something really simple to me: that the human brain is wired when he was teaching about the market to uh, try to short breakdowns and try to long breakouts in his three words uh, in response to that were don't do that uh, a, a eco we did that a little bit earlier and so it'll be about probably six minutes into the video when I post it after this um, so anyways so my mentor told me do not long breakouts and do not short breakdowns and if you look at today's chart you'll see why Right here, if you saw me, I actually boasted a little bit to Karma on Twitter. Uh, I told him I was not long until we pulled this, until we hit this Gex level, and this is where I went long. Uh, and because we had a positive MNF all day, <coughs> and because we were in this ghost zone, right? We're in this massive area with no real resistance. There's a little bit of dark pool right around this area at about two billion, but if we're looking at like 380. Uh, right around this area, it's closer to like 30 billion, right? In this, this area, there's a lot of congestion. Up here, tiny dark pools, we're in a ghost zone. So I had pinned about 395 as my exit. I actually bought 395 calls down here and I held the entire day up. Uh, and so I wait, and this is very simple, you're gonna see RSI on my chart, right? I wait for low, low RSI and I buy. This was actually pretty mid right around here. It wasn't as low as I would have liked it to have been. Uh, it's a little, a little, a little lower than I, I like. I like below 40. Um, but that is that is how I go long, right? In confluence with MNF. So if MNF is saying up, I am going to long the pullbacks. If MNF is saying down, let's say we're reverse of this uh, and we're we're approaching this level. If I'm going to short, I'm going to wait to as close to this level as possible before I do so. Is that helpful to anybody? Good. No answer, so hopefully that's that's it. I, 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 I want you to understand this is how I have been trading for a decade, right? Now, trading tools have fortunately shown me uh, how to parse the data as opposed to just as opposed to just drawing out support resistance lines i don't even use support and resistance anymore i use dark pool and gex and that is it um i've pulled everything besides that and rsi off my chart uh and i put i put weight and credence behind levels uh that have that have gex and dark pools within a certain range i sometimes i'll round this around 30 cents to make it even uh, if that makes sense, if, if they're within like 30 cents or, or 50 cents of another, uh, I'll pick the middle of that line and try to do it. And you can kind of see over here on the chart where I picked the middle of that line. And so our, our, our rejections and bounces were in a couple of different weird spots. But this is a heavy level and Gex and Dark Pools end up acting like magnets sooner or later. So that is... Uh, I don't. I don't look at Vanna. No, uh, I'm. I. I am a smooth brain. I look at those. I know I've gone through a lot of stuff, uh, and kind of explained how I pair all the tools together to make specific choices. Um, 
but the more simplistic you are in your charts the better off you're going to be uh, there are highly 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 skilled traders uh that that watch all of that read the tape and i can do that i just i don't i don't see the point for me personally uh they read tape and they in the harmonics and elliott waves and they're so amazing at it uh, i have friends that are so profitable uh using all of those things and it's really 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 uh awesome to see uh i'm just i just I learned all those things. I've read all the books. I've done all the things, uh, and I, and I found that s simple uh, now Gex and DP levels RSI uh, have worked out way 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 easier for me over time. Uh, oh, you will run down through my game plan for tomorrow morning. Well, it's CPI, um, so it's going to be an absolute uh, crap show, right? So we're we're not quite sure. But if you want if you want a little glimpse into my mind. Um, and this is just this is just I don't I don't uh, predict a, at all. Uh, but if you want what I'm thinking, and we'll see if it plays out, is we have not filled this gap up to this ghost zone yet. Uh, if if I were if I were a betting man, I would think potentially that maybe maybe what however we react to CPI is going to initially bring us up to this spot, maybe a little over, right? We might see 400, we might get a little bit over it, uh, and then there's a potential after that uh, for a sell-off. Uh, ghost zones are areas uh, in between GEX levels that don't have any, don't have any supports, don't have any resistance, so price can move freely between them, if that makes sense. You see how this entire area has nothing? This is a ghost zone. This here, there's not really anything there. That is also a ghost zone. So let's just say, Let's just say we have bullish momentum and market net flow. Price can move freely through that, throughout, throughout this area throughout the day. If we have bearish momentum and we're up here, price can move freely here without a whole lot of rejections and bounces, if that makes sense, if that makes sense. Okay, that is, that is what I wanted to walk you all through. Uh, so I would ask as many questions as you've got. Um, why you have me? Uh, RSI actually. Now, th now this is this is a trick question. Uh, I trade from my phone on Webull off of the one minute, uh, so I, I literally make all of my trades from from my cell phone. Uh, I don't even know what Webull desktop looks like. I keep the five minute up on Trading View because I like I, I like the the less noise when I'm waiting for the day. To uh, to play out, if that's helpful. So I, I enter I enter and exit uh, on uh, from RSI uh, on the one minute. Okay, do you shorten your RSI for entry exit 60/40 or stay 70/30? Okay, so that's that's a good question. That depends on where we are on, where we are uh, in re in reference to a, a gex or a dark pool level. If we hit RSI 42 here uh, and you know, I'd prefer 30, but we're tapping that level. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and enter, uh, and enter not on the green candle. I'm going to try to enter on the red candle, uh, and then I'm going to set my stop for 20% because that's just what I do. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to set my stop for 20%, and I'm going to kind of kind of let it uh, roll down. And if I if I timed it wrong and it ends up going all the way down, uh, that's my bad. I, I took I took 20% on my position. Uh, for the most part, though, these entries, what time frame is Gex Delta compiled on? I use the hourly on my chart. So, and a lot, a lot of, a lot of people do this differently. Some people, some people want to want to go through here uh, and choose all of this, uh, and I choose all here. Jam. Any other questions? You're welcome. By the way, for all of you that are actually, you're all here, so you're all you're all subscribers. You can see my chart, this chart live every day. It's pinned in the in the uh, MNF channel at the top, so you can see my chart. And right below that, uh, or right above it, is a pin showing you how I draw my Gex levels. That's in there as well, so you can get a good shot of that if you if you missed a part of this video. But I keep every morning uh, at about 5:30 a.m. 
I update this chart and then I update it again around 9 a.m. Usually I'm in a meeting for work at that at that point, uh, so I do it all from my phone. But I'll update it again with new GEX levels. This one appeared 30 to 45 minutes before our dip today, uh, maybe an hour. Where I and, and then I added it, and lo and behold, uh, this is what we got. Any other questions? I want everybody to feel comfortable before before I, I say good night. I'm here. And we're gonna do this again next week, but next week, uh, am I a Sith or Jedi? I would be I would be a Jedi for sure, man. Um, we're gonna do this again next week, but but we're gonna next week maybe scroll through a few plays. Uh, and just maybe look at some data with, with CPI out of the way, uh, and look at some dark pools, and look at some algos, uh, and look at different and look at different things, uh, and and see if we can find anything uh, that you all like. And if if you have if you want to look at a particular ticker right now, uh, we could do that as well. I've got about got about 15 left, so we we could do that if you want to take a look at that as well. Uh, hey Heat. Um, the chart live the chart live is in uh, the MNF pins channel so you click on the little uh, the little person in the MNF channel um, and then you click on the little person in the MF channel then click pins and then you're good to go all right I will show Tesla real quick so let's let's just go through the uh, whole process we'll start we'll type in Tesla we want to see what its chart looks like we're gonna pull our hourly out we're gonna we're gonna draw our Greeks. We want to go ahead and make sure that we have its delta correlations up. So we'll go down and do that. It's dealer Greeks. I'm sorry. I always call it delta correlations. It is, it is dealer Greeks. So as you can see here, uh, puts are starting to decline a little bit. Calls are just about the same. So it's kind of medium medium bullish maybe 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 leaning leaning just ever so slightly that way but I, I would still consider this a non-play uh, for myself right now because I like strong signals in one direction all right so let's go to the stock dashboard well that is interesting look at this look where price has been has been going to over and over and over and over again we have one we have one gex level here um, can I can I zoom in more to get a better look at it all right, we have one single level here. And let's see, it seems like it's bouncing off the top and rejecting off the top, so we'll choose that as our level. I wouldn't know where to go long or short on this. My goodness, 121, 27, that's about where we closed, I think, uh, right at, right around that area. So this is, this is interesting. There's nothing. So this is why it's been holding as a magnet here. One thing I would say is if you start to see some above or some below, uh, like if one if one appears, uh, you know, at 125 or 130, uh, that would be that would be a, a good opportunity to check uh, the dealer Greeks and you know the algo and its dark pool and start to see start to see maybe if it's going to drift up drift upwards in that direction. Any other questions? Y'all been great. So quiet. Okay, uh, well we got we got it at 38 minutes, so that's a, that's a not too much uh, not too much information for everybody to. Oh, you you want to see Starbucks? All right, we'll do one more, one more. Let's pull it up. Oh, I typed in bucks. Thanks, monster. You did this to me. So we've actually gapped up a little bit here, so it's going to be difficult. Even on our daily, we're 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 kind of sitting at the top of the range, so it's it's going to be difficult to judge any any uh, too much too much above this uh, right now. This is our stock dashboard. Let's go to our let's go to our options dashboard and see what it looks like. Pretty flat there. This is this this is dipping a little bit. You could see you could see right here before it's before it's rise. Uh, I prefer I prefer Gex over spot Gex. I like uh, I like less I like as few lines as possible. Uh, I have old eyes. 
let's just see here. It's, it's OI is pretty mixed. I let, let's let's check its dealer Greeks build up just to see. So it's still it's got quite a bit of puts getting loaded, but look at the calls. So this one's still this one's still a bit of a no play to me because there's there's not really any uh, puts have come down some, but I want to see them down here while calls are up. Uh, it, it, it could be a good scalp, but I definitely want to play things that are substantially clearer in the play. Uh, if I'm swinging, uh, if, if I'm scalping, I'm scalping spy. Uh, if I'm swinging, I'm swinging whatever I find that has the most, the most directional support with as many tools as possible, if that makes sense. Vital lines and is the gex level I was talking about in Tesla? No, those are the candles. Uh, where did I put Tesla? Oh, I clicked out of it. We'll go back. Yeah, the, 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 those are the candles. I just I just zoomed in. Uh, jam. This 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 dot this dotted line that might be. Nope, as you can see, it's it's not. It might be the top of it. It's just it's just a line. Any other questions? Yeah. I guess you can't. I guess I, I guess you get to see this live when it's running. So so thinking thinking that it's nothing would be priced because you'd actually see it moving. As you can see, the candles are right there. Okay, uh, all right, so for next week, uh, think about uh, some charts you might want to look at. We'll probably, uh, we'll probably come back again next Wednesday evening. Uh, about midweek is good to see where things went. Um, and we'll kind, of, we'll kind of just check through and see what everybody's looking at. And maybe we'll look at some charts together, take our time, uh, go over the data over and over again, and just keep checking course uh, I love y'all that's why I'm here I, w I am born to teach so that's what I do in real life guys so and gals awesome ET thank you